uh, thanks Tap no for introduction. Uh, let's have uh, another work about inferentability. Joint work with Yofgeni, uh, Martin, and Join. It's about the confusion diffusion network. So the first question, what's confusion diffusion networks? Uh, it's a terminology we invent ourselves. Uh, well, it's, it's just the invention, the talk is not interesting. Uh, this network is motivated by substitution permutation networks, like AES. Uh, it's a very famous one. It's a uh, repetition of key addition, paralleled S-box, and uh, a diffusion. Uh, in SPN network, the S-box should be a complex uh, permutation over a small domain. It should uh, destroy structure, be non linear looks quite random, and the diffusion box should have simple structure. Yeah, and uh, and the round key. Yeah. Uh, in confusion diffusion network, it's the same except we don't have the key anymore. Uh, yeah. Honestly, yeah. There's one more difference is that in the SPN, the S box it's kind of fixed, but in our work, S box it's a random chosen. So we consider it's a domain extension, like you have a nice permutation, small permutation. How could you construct a nice permutation over a large domain? Oh yeah, and uh, the confusion diffusion terminology goes back to Shannon. Well, this design paradigm is credited to Fisto. So yeah, so the goal of our talk, of our work, uh, we want to explore the theoretical soundness of confusion diffusion network as a way to construct cryptography secure permutations. And in the particular, the S box would be modeled as a random permutation and a public random permutation. And we want to construct a bigger random permutation. Uh, we would work in ideal model. Yeah. Uh, just one more time, S box is random permutation oracle, or random box, S box are independent. The D box will be fixed, uh, explicit, and hopefully a very simple permutation. And uh, does this network similar to a random permutation? How many runs do we need? What kind of diffusion box we need? That would be the work we do. Uh, we don't really have close related work, so this is kind of related work. It's by Miles and Willa in Crypto 2012. They prove indistinguishability result about SPN when the S block is a secret permutation. And uh, we basically nothing the uh, same, but uh, that's kind of si uh, related works. Uh, some more notation. In this picture, it's an example of confusion diffusion network. Each line would be a n bit value. So the S box would be a permutation over n bit. You should think n as the security parameter in our construction. And in each round, there will be a w box in parallel. W is called width. And the number of round is named R. So the domain, uh, the CDN, it's a permutation over WN bit. Oh, if you, you also need to remember that the diffusion box, the top and thin one, it's also a permutation over WN bit. Now, I'll define the indifferentability security experiment. Uh, in such experiment, there will be two words. One is the real word, one is the ideal word. And they can hardly be, they can hardly distinguish. In the real world, the distinguisher have oracle assigned to our construction in bio direction. It also have oracle assigned to each individual S box used in our construction. One more time to uh, remind you that the, all the S box are independent and the D box, uh, the diffusion box is fixed. 
Uh, in the ideal world, the confusion diffusion networks is replaced by a real giant random permutation. And to have us the same interface, oh, we need a simulator. Whenever the distinguisher want to query the S box, it's really answered by a simulator. The simulator should fake up some answers such that these two were look the same. In particular, the, similar, uh, the simulator should answer the query in a way such that the S box seems to be consistent with the permutation Q. Thus, we must allow the simulator to assign Q. Okay, so the theorem should look like, our result should look like uh, for a certain number of rounds for such and such diffusion permutations and for such a simulator, the distinguisher can now distinguish these two words using a certain number of queries. Oh, notice that uh, we want to uh, start a case where the distinguisher is computationally unbounded. Uh, thus, its ability is only limited by the number of queries he made. Yeah. Now let's explore what, what, what's the diffusion permutation we use. In the study, uh, we have explored several combi combinatorial properties that is, would be very useful for the diffusion permutation. And this is the, yeah, it's some terminology we invented. They are at first so-called entry-wise randomized pre-image resistance, or RCR, or RPR, and so-called entry-wise randomized collision resistance, or RCR, and in the last uh, conductance. Uh, we would explore them one by one. The first one would be randomized pre-image resistance. What does it mean? You have a diffusion, a diffusion permutation. And you, we focus on one of the input wire, say the first wire, and one of the output wire, say the second wire. Uh, and we fix uh, the rest of the input wire to some value, and we feed a random input in the wire we care about. We hope that the output wire, yeah, in this example, Y2, would be very random, uh, in the sense that for any value y, uh, for any value y2 star, and for any uh, x2, x3, x4, you, you fixed, uh, by randomly choosing x1, x2 should maybe hit y2, uh, y2 should hit y2 star with very low probability. And uh, it's in fact very easy. You just pick, uh, you, you consider each wire as a uh, field of size 2 to the n, and you choose pi as a random uh, linear permutation such that the correlated matrix is made up of non-zero entries, the next step. So the next property is slightly more tricky. Uh, it's called randomized collision resistance. I guess from the picture, you could somehow understand what that goes. Uh, the same thing. We focus on one input wire, say the first wire, and uh, one output wire, say the second output wire. Uh, for the remaining input wire, we fix it to two different tuple. One is y2, y3, y4, and y is y2 uh, prime, y3 prime, y4 prime. And so we fix s1 to be random. Uh, by fixing the rest parameter, uh, the rest of the input in these two different tuple, you get two different output, output y2 and y2 prime. Uh, RCR says r2 should equal r2 prime with very low probability. So C stands for collision. It could also stand for cannot be linear because linear permutation cannot be RCR. Uh, yeah, say pi is a linear permutation. Then y2 should be a linear combination of its input, like a times x1 plus b times x2, etc. Uh, so it's y2 prime. Then you could uh, easily find some blue value such that in that two equation, the blue part equals 
Thus, despite how you randomly chose x1, y2 equals y2 prime with probability 1. Thus, it cannot be RCR. Uh, yeah, there is a special case when w is equals 2, but I don't really want to discuss it. Uh, though linear permutation doesn't work, v, van, uh, v construct an explicit construction that is RCR. So it's a linear permutation sigma composed a physical polynomial composed the inverse of sigma. The physical polynomial is that there are W wires, you lift all but one wires alone, and for the last wire, you add something that is determined by the rest of the wire. Yeah, it's easy to see it's invert form. And uh, we prove this construction is RCR. The detail is not present here. Okay, so the last property, the last property is called conductance. Uh, it's a very cool property, and it can be defined by a game. Uh, in the game, an adversary chose Q value in each wire. So this orange bubble donates the value chosen by the adversary. Says, yes, like, for example, U1 denotes Q, Q value chosen by the adversary for the first input wire, and uh, U2 for the value chosen for the second input wire, and so on. And uh, the points earned by the adversary is the number of type of, uh, it's number of pairs such that uh, of vector x and vector y. The vector x, it's inside the direct product of u1, u2 to u4, and the vector y is inside the uh, direct product v1, v2 to v4. And such that uh, y is the output of pi if the input of x. Okay. We define conductance as the maximum point, maximum number of points can be earned by the adversary. So why do we care about conductance? Uh, remind that in SP, uh, yeah, in confusion diffusion network, this diffusion box is surrounded by S box. And uh, in the ideal world, the S box is simulated by simulator. Uh, and uh, the simulator at each point should have committed to some of the value inside S box. And uh, yeah, and uh, maybe that, th this green points that is like the points that are adjacent to the diffusion permutation is the size, is the site, sites U1 to U W, V1 to V W, V defined in conductance. Oh, sorry. Um, the reason we care about conductance is that uh, assuming the conductance is large, it means assuming the distinguisher have query or this S box such that all these blue points have been defined in this S box. Then the distinguisher have learned out uh, in, in this part, which means the simulator need to react um, uh, like this to this like X, Y such that everything is well defined. Uh, the more work that the simulator does, the more likely it will be caught. So we would hope to have low conductance. It's easy to show that conductance is lower bounded by Q and not upper bounded by Q to W. If you choose a random permutation, its conductance would be very close to Q, which is optimal. But we don't know any explicit, explicit construction for a permutation with low conductance. So that will be an open problem. And if you want to have a linear confusion, a diffusion permutation, uh, we conjecture there exists a linear permutation with conductance Q square, but just a conjecture. Okay. So our result would depend on how many rounds we have and uh, what diffusion permutation we choose. If we can use any permutation, diffusion permutation on the left, 
five round would give you not not so good security, and seven round would give you good security. But if you want insist to use linear diffusion permutation, uh, we need a nine round for not so good security, and eleven round for conjecturally good security. Okay. So good security means the advantage of the distinguisher is at most q square over two to n. And uh, not so good means q to two w to the two to n or two to the n. W is the wise of the CDN uh, network. Uh, if w is a small constant, it doesn't matter. But if w is large, you want to have a good security. And we only have one proof and uh, one theorem, one simulator, but it has it's parameterized by three Boolean flag. Uh, we slightly, yeah, we would exploit. Uh, this is the most compact uh, SDN network we have, only five rounds. Yeah, and despite the number of rounds, the simulator would very similar to the previous work for 14 round physical network. If you have listened to previous presentation by Akwasha, sorry, Ashwaya, sorry, Ashwaya, uh, uh, we are basically doing the same thing. We have a detection zone in the middle, by marked by yellow, and uh, uh, alter detection zone. And if the detection zone detects something, it would complete the chain and uh, adapt some value. So there are two adapt zones. And the adapt zone is guarded by what we call entangle zone. OK, for this file run construction to be not too good security, we need to end the diffusion permutation in the entangle zone to be RCR. But we know that uh, uh, this means this permutation cannot be linear. If you want to use linear permutation, we could add one more round in the entangle zone. And in such uh, construction, a nine round construction, we only need the permutation in the entangle zone to be RPR. So they could be linear. And another concern is about the security. For five round, it's just okay security. It's, uh, you should consider it as, uh, why should you consider it this way? Uh, the distinguisher can make at most Q query to each of the box in the middle. Thus, in order to fill the middle part, the distinguisher have like Q to the W different ways to fill it. And the security is like Q to the W, it's the different ways to fill the middle part, square over two to the n. For better security, we add one more round. So it would be difficult for the distinguisher to fill the middle part. Yeah. The ways, oh yeah, the different ways the distinguisher can fill the middle part is bounded by the conductance of the middle diffusion permutation. And as we show that, uh, as, as I just told, by choosing a random permutation in the middle, a random fixed permutation in the middle, the conductance is almost linear, so you would get good security. Uh, the same thing, if you want to use linear uh, diffusion permutation, you could add one more run in entangle zone. In the middle one, uh, it's your choice whether you want to switch to a linear permutation. Uh, if you, we, you can use nonlinear permutation, we have like provable good con a small conductance. If you choose a linear permutation, we only have conjecturally small conductance. So that well, we just discussed the security part. Uh, we have a other problem about query complexity. Remember that uh, the simulator could query the a big, giant, real, random permutation Q, something here. Uh, but uh, our distinguisher would query maybe the big permutation for many times for any suspicious query that already filled the right box in the left. Yeah, still, like, 
the distinguisher may query at most Q to each of the red box in the left, but then it would have Q to the W different way to fill the left part. So the same trick, add one more round, then the distinguishers uh, only have like conductance of mu different way to fill the left part. It would decrease the, yeah, co the uh, query complexity. So our construction is have three different flag. You, you can add one more round for enhanced security. You can add one more round on the left for smaller query complexity. And uh, you can add four rounds, one per entangle zone, to reduce the requirement on the diffusion uh, permutation. Uh, in particular, uh, you can use linear diffusion permutation. Yeah. And this would be a summary of our uh, result compared to previous works. Uh, it shows that we, uh, and this is in the case when the VAS equals two. Uh, for the five round, it's explicit construction for the seven round, the middle construction, the diffu uh, diffusion permutation with low conductance, we could only show its existence without construction. Yeah. And uh, that's the result. And uh, also end of my talk. Thank you. All right, we have time for a couple of questions. Your analysis concentrated on carefully chosen uh, diffusion maps, which have uh, good conductance properties, etc. In, in practice, practical designs, uh, people are using uh, very simple uh, diffusion layers. For example, think about N equals W. So uh, uh, you might have uh, eight bit S box, mm -hmm. and you have eight such S boxes. Mm -hmm. And what you do is you just spread the eight output bits of the S-Box, uh, one going to uh, each one of the eight uh, S-Boxes of the next round. So assuming that you have uh, uh, this particular um, diffusion network, which is not linear, I, I mean, it's linear, but trivially so. You are just doing a bit permutation, which splits the output of each S-Box to uh, different S-Boxes in the next layer. What are the results that you can show? Uh, of, uh, we could not show results in that case for two reasons. One, you are considered like N is quite small, but in our construction, I've said that N is like the security parameter. So when N is a small constant, we, don't, we could not really prove anything. And for that kind of, if you are seeing like the most traditional permutation in SPN network, uh, that's quite weak for us. In that case, like the, it's not PRP, it's not, uh, it's, oh, sorry, it's not randomized pre-mint resistance, but uh, you could use, uh, there exists simple construction of randomized pre mate resistance. Like you just do a, a linear permutation would be good enough. Yeah. yeah, so like for one question it's no, for one it's conjecturally yes. <laughs> All right, uh, no more questions? 
uh, okay, just, just a quick question actually. So you, you, you showed for the conductance, so you show the lower bound is Q and it goes up to Q to the W. So I understand you want to have simple construction, but if in the extreme case, if you pick a permutation at random, can you show with some probability that it gets optimal conductance? Or uh, so sorry? If you pick a permutation at random, can okay. you show that with some positive perm uh, probability? Uh, so, so which permutation in random? No, hypothetically, just for existential results. So can you show that permutations exist that have optimal conductance? Uh, we show there exist permutation. Uh, there exist permutation with very low con conductance. Okay. And in fact, uh, most of the permutation. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Let's thank both speakers of this session again. Thank you. Thank you.